how can you make a durable cardboard shield that'll not only stop nerf darts, but hold up to the brutal beatings of foam swords and even a mason chain that can barely even be considered a toy? Well, in this video, you're going to learn the five things that I did to make a nearly indestructible cardboard shield. And at the end of the video, you're going to get a super sweet bonus tip that'll help you take a couple of your cardboard projects really to the next level. All right, so tip number one is to use strong cardboard. Now, cardboard comes in a couple different types. We have uh, first the layers of the cardboard. So here, we'll imagine this is a cardboard piece. I'm drawing my left hand. It's kind of rough. And we got the fluting in the middle. So here's one kind of cardboard. Now, they also make a double layer cardboard. Usually the second layer is a bit thinner than the first, so that the fluting is offset. And this makes the cardboard a lot stronger. Um, you can find these in some kinds of cardboard boxes that have to ship like heavy stuff that uh, needs a durable cardboard box. So if you use this cardboard, you're really going to level up your creations. But sometimes it can be hard to find that in mass quantities. So just watch out for the type of cardboard you're using because there's also thinner cardboard and thicker cardboard, and they all have different names, we don't need to get into that. Um, and so you can have thin versions or the same fluting, where it's just spread out wider for thicker cardboard. They also make single layer like chipboard, which you'd find in like a cereal box, and you can use that for decorations on the outside of your shield, but obviously it doesn't have very much structure because there's no fluting. If you have a limited supply of thick cardboard, I recommend using the thickest stuff for the core of your shield, uh, the, the main frame, and then you can use thinner stuff for like uh, extra details. Tip number two, Two goes along with this I want you to layer your cardboard to make a strong cardboard shield so you're gonna need to get a couple really big boxes and then trace out the shape of your shield that you want and then you're just gonna cut it again and again until you have like at least three layers of cardboard it's gonna be even stronger if one of those is a double layer cardboard piece you can see on this guy we have several layers they're all kind of mashed now because uh, it's been through a lot of use but it's held up really well something to pay attention to when you're double layering it though especially if you have a lot of the same kind of box is you want to look at these crease lines that the, come in the boxes and try to avoid lining these up with each other because that's just going to create a weak point in your cardboard shield another thing you might want to consider is rotating the grain in your cardboard shield so on here all of the grain is going up and down in the shield but if I took one of the inner layers and made it so the grain was going side to side I get kind of a mesh grain structure overall I'm gonna use my whiteboard again here so if all of the shield has the grain going up and we take some of it going side to side that's going to help prevent it from buckling either sideways or up and down and as always if you want it to look pretty you want to make sure the clean side of your cardboard is facing outward so just pay attention to that when you're cutting out all the layers if you got some really dirty ones with like a bunch of labels on it or like weird tape uh, put that on the inside and put the clean ones on the outside so it's easy to like paint or do whatever you want tip number three is to optimize the shape so here you can see that I have a whole cardboard shield. It's cut out so that it protects most of my body when I'm holding it. But also, I have these decorative extra layers on the inside and those are really for reinforcing right around where my hand goes and that just sort of optimizes the shape because I didn't have a ton of cardboard so adding some of the decorations in a way that's going to reinforce the shield is a nice way to uh, look, sort of like use up all the cardboard that you have in the best way possible. Something else to think about though is the shape of your shield. You want to try to avoid things that stick out too much that um, might get snapped off easily like these protrusions at the top are a little bit fragile and it probably would have been wise to sort of have a cleaner straight cut uh, so it wouldn't break off as easily but these were here for a cool reason that I'll mention later hey before we move to the next tip and I reveal the secret sauce for making an indestructible cardboard shield if you're getting value out of this video consider smashing the like button and subscribing to maker brains so that I know you loved it and I have a question I want to pass off to you have you ever had a cardboard model or creation get smashed or destroyed if so Drop that in the comments below, maybe with like a little story, and I'll be sure to join in your sorrow for the loss of a worthy project. All right, the not so secret secret sauce to making a strong cardboard shield is to add reinforcements to your cardboard shield. What reinforcements look like for me are a bunch of pieces of scrap wood, hot glued and screwed into the shield. You might have noticed on the front of the shield, I've got these pieces, the thicker ones are straight up just screwed into the cardboard. Now, they're in strategic locations to help reinforce the like ar around the arm area, uh, but still leave a nice soft place for my arm to go. These lower ones actually sort of help the shield hang down low uh, and not swing around too much because they're so heavy, but they also reinforce this big open space and the weak point that was created by this window 
right here. These boards up here are to reinforce the flaps at the top that I said were kind of weak, and then these ones on the very top are to protect from cuts coming straight down on top of the shield that tend to crumple it. It is worth mentioning that there are other ways to make your cardboard stronger. People use like wood glue and epoxy or bondo, and they'll spread that or like wipe it or coat the cardboard in it, and once that soaks into the cardboard, it cures and hardens really hard, and then your cardboard is like hard like a rock, and that could really strengthen your shield. But that's a little bit more complicated and not accessible for everybody, and I just wanted to show a way you could make a cardboard shield without needing any of those fancy techniques. If you're a cardboard purist and don't even want to deal with extra ribs of like wood on your cardboard, then uh, I have a suggestion for you as well. It's kind of impractical to make a super duper thick cardboard shield with like a million layers of cardboard, although I would recommend that if you're not going to use uh, wood, maybe you do like four or five layers of cardboard with some rotating in the grain. You can also use ribs on the cardboard. Right here, I have a, a book holder, and this is all cardboard, but the front was kind of floppy, so there's this three-piece rib going across the front and helping add structure there. It didn't need to be thick the whole way down, but the rib up here added all the structure I needed. The same thing can go on your cardboard shield. You could take... Uh, for a shield this big, I'd probably use like at least four pieces all put together, and maybe I'd rotate the grain for a couple of those so they're facing different directions and have different levels of strength in different directions. Then you're going to glue all those together to make like a long, thin uh, brace that you can then glue onto the shield just like you saw in the cardboard box. I wouldn't recommend making it more than like an inch high off the shield just because it gets really awkward, but kind of the taller it is, the stronger it'll probably be. It'll just need to be glued on really well to avoid it just coming back off or breaking. We still have that bonus tip coming up, but tip number five is to put really good straps on your cardboard shield. So what I actually did with these anchors is I put these holes through the cardboard. They're connected with like a wire that goes around and then connects to this bent piece of metal that then loops around uh, my cardboard, my Velcro strap. That wire goes all the way through the shield and comes back out the bottom because I didn't want to do just a little loop right here because that would pull back through the cardboard pretty easily and that actually goes through all three layers of my cardboard and then these extra pieces on here uh, actually cover up where it pokes through and that gives me some really strong mounting points that I can pull on uh, and they're not going to break my cardboard. I actually stitched the uh, strap in here because I knew glue was probably going to be a little bit weak for this heavy duty scenario. Now when it comes to the straps, I did something a little bit unique. These are actually old rollerblading straps uh, that would be used to fasten rollerblades. They work really well because they got the two parts of Velcro uh, and uh, Velcro straps are kind of a key to having a really great cardboard shield because it's going to allow you to move around where you're still holding that shield. It's not going to be flopping. It's going to be really well secured to your arm. I have little strap loops on each side. There's one here behind my elbow as well so that I can hold it with either hand. But as you can see, having those Velcro straps is nice because it allows me to hold other things in that hand at the same time. All right. So the bonus tip is to use clear plastic to level up your cardboard creations. Now, you might think this isn't super cool, uh, but it really helps in a cardboard shield because I can still see you, but I'm like completely covered behind the shield. I used to have an entire sheet of clear plastic across the top, but it eventually got smashed when a mason chain came straight down on top of it. So uh, I don't recommend putting them right next to the edge, but on this shield, I have two slits, one at the bottom, one at the top. And if I flip the shield over, it's it's more of like a like a SWAT shield. I can go down like close to the ground and just look through this one slot and stay really well covered. So if you're making your own cardboard shield, think about how possibly inverting the shield with the kind of shape that you create can create a, a different sort of application for it, with especially if you have windows in it. I'll note as well, windows are especially useful if you're playing with Nerf guns because they protect your face and you just don't get shot. When it comes to getting clear plastic, there are a lot of ways you can do it. You could just get clear plastic sheets if you want. But if you're really thrifty, the best sources I have found are actually these big uh, mixed lettuce organic containers because they have a big flat plastic sheet on the top. The corrugations would work okay. Uh, the side is like all corrugated because most thin plastic containers that are clear uh, have some sort of corrugation in them to make them stronger. But that big flat sheet is really useful. There are actually a ton of different ways to make your cardboard stronger that I haven't even shared yet so click or tap on the video right here to discover a bunch of ways to make your cardboard super strong or click or tap over here for another video by maker brain if you're still watching this video that's super awesome you're more dedicated than like 90 percent of my viewers who have left by now so you might want to consider joining the maker brain tribe by clicking subscribe i'm eli Tennant. this is maker brain and have a blessed day